Hey everyone and welcome. Thanks for joining me again at a new Facebook Live. We're here at Clean Machine are celebrating our seventh anniversary. So seven years in business. It's always great to see uh, um, my other fellow entrepreneurs, vegantrepreneurs as I like to call them, those in the plant-based movement who are starting their own businesses, successful businesses. Um, it's great to be a help. I do, uh, for those of you who don't know, I uh, do consulting for um, other startup businesses who are in the plant-based community and uh, trying to help them, uh, you know, steer through how to get to the marketplace, um, how to set up a proper uh, retail and, and, and a business to consumer. Uh, marketing and efforts, pricing, all that kind of good stuff. So if you're interested in, in setting up your own um, plant-based business, definitely you might want to reach out to me too as well. But Clean Machine, seven years in business. It's exciting. So we're actually going to be giving away some product today. So ask a question. And if you ask a question and I answer it live here on air, you maybe uh, could win one of our nice prizes. We can be giving away uh, clean BCAs, uh, both uh, lemonade and fruit punch. Um, the lemonade's amazing. I love the lemonade, especially in hot weather. Florida is really hot right now in the upper 90s. Uh, also, you could choose a clean green protein, ahi flower, sub block 80, any of the products. So free product of your choice if you ask some questions and we get use it live here on air. So go ahead and type your question into the box and uh, questions could be anything. Um, can, can be about the products, can be about supplements in general, um, can be about diet, can be about a vegetarian or vegan diet, uh, what to eat, where to start. Um, anything like that. So um, definitely tune in, just uh, add anything down in the comment box. Uh, once it pops up, let me know. Um, topics could be, you know, protein, um, specific vitamins like vitamin K, omega-3s, uh, B12, uh, any of these types of things, or just questions more about like, you know, what do you do or what do you take or what do you eat or um, bodybuilding or competing. I did that for sure. You can see some of my trophies behind me, uh, natural and natural bodybuilding awards. So this is this is up for you. It's, it's seventh anniversary for us for uh, being a plant-based uh, fitness nutrition, but uh, totally uh, really would like to hear some feedback from you about what's interesting to you, what you're excited about, what you're curious about. Um, if I can um, answer those questions, I'm happy to answer them. Um, one of my topics I want to address, though, is uh, food fear. So, um, yeah, I noticed uh, T. Colin Campbell, one of my favorites, who wrote uh, uh, a great book um, and has been kind of a grandfather for the, the movement, the plant-based movement, long-term uh, vegan. And, you know, he had uh, made a comment about, hey, a little bit of sugar or salt is, is really not going to hurt you. And I thought that was an important comment um, because... Uh, I think we can get so obsessed with all these little details. Oh, you can't do this. You can't do oil. Can't do sugar. Can't do salt. Can't do, can't do. You, you get so overloaded with these can't do's. It's stifling and paralyzing to the point where people are afraid of this and uh, anti-nutrients and, and leptins and, 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 and lectins and all these different things that people start building all this fear. Oh, I can't do that. And then that, and that's going to hurt me. And that's going to hurt me. And I'm like, chill out. <laughs> really, we're talking very small differences in, in the way. You're, and, and it's not taking into account that we have mechanisms in our body that can respond to this and, and change it and heal it and fix it in our body and adjust to some of these things. So, you know, I just encourage people not to get so obsessed about these, all these tiny little details. Look, I know there's a lot of people out there trying to sell books, trying to sell things, trying to sell ideas. Um, and, and they, they, you know, they dive into one real specific tiny little functionality of food or something. And, you know, they make it 
too overemphasized to the point where people freak out and just avoid entire food groups. When yes, everything has may have some slight toxicity or slight negative effects to it, but you're not looking at all the positive benefits that it's doing, the antioxidants, the polyphenols, the the other phytochemicals in there that could be balancing those effects. You know, it's like, oh, stay away from caffeine. And I, look, I understand some people are totally sensitive to caffeine. So you do have to watch out for that. I mean, you get really can get bad rashes or things like that. Definitely, if that's the case, then you need to eliminate those types of things. But, you know, some people get so like, I can't do chocolate because it's got a little bit of caffeine in it, or I can't do green tea because it's got caffeine. And I'm like, okay, so caffeine by itself, if you took it all by itself, may have def detrimental effects. But in its natural whole food state, you're getting quite a different effect. There's other phytochemicals like a theanine in green tea that actually acts as a nervous calmative. So um, yes, caffeine is a central nervous stimulant, but when you are balancing that with amount of uh, theanine that is naturally occurring in the whole green tea, you're getting quite a different experience. So you know, it's amazing when I was looking at vitamin K and everybody was saying, oh, you can't get enough vitamin uh, K1 doesn't convert very, very well. And now we know that's not true with the new research out there. As long as you're eating a high fiber plant based diet, that is actually changing your microbiome. So they were looking at one thing in a Petri dish or in, in people eating a certain way. And that's what that study says about that scenario. Taking it for face value for every single person is just kind of silly and, and, and not accurate. Um, so when they, they found that when people move to a plant-based diet, which is high in uh, vitamin K1, that K1 converted at a much higher rate. Why is that? Why is that happening in uh, plant-based eaters? And the reason being is with all that extra fiber, you actually start feeding the gut bacteria that actually transform that vitamin K1 into K2. So here you are in a situation where you've shifted your diet, but you're overly concerned about that vitamin K1 not being significantly converted well enough, not understanding that when you shift that diet, you're also changing your microbiome. And as that microbiome changes, you're actually increasing the amount of vitamin K1 to K2 conversion and being totally sufficient in there. So there are some supplements that I take and there are some supplements that I would never take. And um, I can go through a couple of those like probiotics. A lot of people ask me about probiotics. Now probiotics are very important in our guts, taking them as a supplement. And so let's just look at what the probiotic field looks like. So we have by some accounts at least, and they're all over the board. We're not quite sure what the actual number is, but uh, up to 40 trillion um, probiotic centers. Have, and then probably over 400 different strains. So if you look at a bottle and you see uh, like 8 billion or 10 billion, that's a lot. It seems like a lot, but when you compare it to 40 trillion, that's nothing. And you look on that bottle again and it says, oh, three or four or even eight strains. Well, that's great. Eight strains out of 400. So when you look at eight strains out of 400 and a, a billion to five billion or eight billion out of 40 trillion, it really is little to nothing uh, in effect. Now, there are some scenarios where probiotics may be uh, in a specific therapeutic purpose. If you have a severely impacted or compromised digestive tract, they may be helpful. And there's good science out there showing that can be helpful. But for the average healthy person, taking probiotics is not it. Now, what happens when you have good prebiotic fibers coming in, fructooligosaccharides from fruit and veggies and chicory root and all these different plants uh, especially dark greens, even polyphenols now we understand are actually prebiotic. That means the polyphenols are actually being consumed by the probiotics and converted. So now that you know all that's going on, you're saying, well, doesn't that make a lot more sense to feed all 40 trillion, all 400 strains what they need to survive? 
And on the converse basis, if you're eating an animal-based diet, what you're doing is feeding bad bacteria. Yeah, and they produce two different things called putrezines and cadaverines. These are putrezine. Is what, <laughs> putrezine is exactly what it uh, sounds like and smells like putrid. <laughs> it's because it's putrefaction. It actually rots flesh. That's what those uh, bacteria do. When you put food in you, just like if you took, killed an animal and left it on the side of the road, you see it rotting, you smell it rotting, that is putrezines being released. Putrezines and cadaverines, guess where they got the word cadaverine from, right? Cadavers, dead, rotting human beings. Well, that's, that's exactly what those bacteria do. And every time you eat animal products, you are increasing the amount of putrezines and, and cadaverines, these bad bacteria that are producing these nasty chemicals that are actually toxic to our body and destructive to our body. Um, they're made to break down dead animals. <laughs> That's what they do. So when you're putting a dead animal into your body, they still do the same thing, whether that animal is rotting on the side of the road or rotting inside of your gut, it's the same thing. So again, it's all about what you're putting in there. So there are some supplements that I would take, some supplements that I would never take, uh, just because in this case, I don't think they're necessary. Vitamin K, I don't think is necessary based on this research. Look, one scoop of clean green protein, right? We, we just found this out because we just got it on the label for this uh, new bottle. One scoop supplies over 1100% of your vitamin K. Dark greens are loaded with vitamin K. So if you're getting all this vitamin K plus all that prebiotic fiber, nine grams of fiber in a scoop of this, all that prebiotic fiber feeding those bacteria that can convert all that vitamin K, you're getting way more vitamin K than your body ever needs. So great for building up bone tissue, helping nice strong bone tissue. It helps actually increase the fibrous proteins that strengthen the bone. You ever break open a bone and see the inside of it, you see all those fibers in there. That's actually proteins, not calcium. And, and those are made with the help of vitamin K2. So strengthening bones, uh, keeping blood flow go as it acts as a blood thinner. These are, these are great things. So no need for vitamin K. Some of the supplements I do think um, are very important to take. Vitamin D3, because look, we're just not outside getting sunshine every day like we should normally. Vitamin B12. And fortunately, now in the new labels, we have vitamin B12 right on there. You know, we just discovered that uh, lentein is one of the few plants in the world that we know and is convert, uh, commercially available that actually contains real, true bioactive B12 inside of the plant. That's actually the bacteria being pulled up into the plant so that when you eat the whole food plant, the plant and its whole food state, which is what's in uh, clean green protein. Remember, we use the whole plant, the leaf, the flower, the stem, the root, everything. All that gets just dehydrated and powdered and you get the whole plant nutrition. We don't add any vitamins or minerals to clean green protein and you're getting just true, real whole food nutrients in their whole food state from clean green protein. So still don't have any questions up. Uh, if you do have any questions, feel free to ask. It can be almost any topic, uh, veganism, vegetarianism. Remember, if you post a question and I uh, get to, able to respond to it, you might, uh, we'll contact you and you could win a free product of your choice. So uh, get those questions up there and, and uh, let me know. Uh, if you are watching this after the Facebook Live, um, you also have a chance to be able to uh, leave a question and um, still win a product too. So we're gonna give away one during the live program if, uh, if we get some questions. And two, um, if you're watching this after the live program, uh, we'll give away within the first couple of days of this uh, of this live uh, program too. So if you're watching it way in the future, sorry about that, no free products for you, but we will do this uh, pretty regularly. So be sure next time there's a Facebook Live to tune in and we'll be giving away more products throughout the rest of the time too as well. I really you know, wanna give back, we do give backs uh, every quarter to plant-based companies. Um, we uh, plan to hopefully do the next World Vegan Bodybuilding Championship 
kablam, yes, we want to get uh, all of you vegans who are doing amazing things with your physiques out there, male and female, and uh, do the second uh, World Vegan Bodybuilding Championship. It's a natural body building competition. Um, we were hoping to get it uh, this year, but obviously in 2020 with COVID and uh, the, the whole pandemic, the lockdown, uh, gyms not being opened, we just uh, needed to delay it so that more people could participate in it. Uh, it'll be in Florida and we're excited to bring that to you when and if <laughs> we get a space where there's uh, not another outbreak, uh, knock on wood, let's hope there's not. Um, and remember, there's a lot of good information. Hey, I was just reading this amazing study, uh, speaking of working out, that showed, um, it's called uh, Lifestyle Risk, I'll read it right quick to you because I've got it open right now, Lifestyle Risk Factors, Inflammatory Mechanisms, and COVID-19 Hospitalization. It's a community-based cohort study of over 387,000 adults in the UK. And they found that um, uh, risk factors of unhealthy behaviors in combination accounted for a 51% of the attributable severe COVID-19 cases. And, and one of the factors that they looked at was physical activity. So this is really interesting that we're seeing now that even physical activity, exercising on a regular basis can improve your immune system and increase your chances for surviving and reduce the risks of severe cases of COVID-19, which can be debilitating and can even, even uh, leave a permanent and long-term uh, damage of results. So very important to keep doing your exercise, stay with your nutritional programs and maintain a healthy immune system. All right, well, it looks like we didn't get any questions this time around, but hopefully we will. And, and uh, again, if you're watching this in the future, please leave your questions and I will hope to get back to them and as soon as possible. And uh, let me check one other thing before I leave here. And let's see if we got any questions one more place. Okay. So um, don't forget to leave questions next time or leave them even after the Facebook Live and, um, and uh, we can take it from there. Uh, love to get your feedback, love to hear what you're interested in, what you're curious about. If you heard other things on other websites, other blogs, other YouTube channels that you feel, is that really true? You know, hey, I don't have all the answers, but at least we can start the discussion. I'll give you what I know about the, the research that's available out there, um, what studies are out there, and, um, and then we can take it from there. It's all a dialogue. I don't claim to be right about everything. That's not who I am. What I want to do is give people the, the best information possible. When I find better information, I'll share that instead. I don't mind being wrong because wrong means I've found something better. So remember that next time when you're wrong, say you're wrong and move on and, and grab that new information and share that until you find something else. Just like the old saying is do good and do better until you know better and then do better. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks again for those of you who did join me. I uh, see a couple of people watching. Uh, thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this. Happy seventh anniversary, Clean Machine. And I hope lots of success to all of you out there who are vegan entrepreneurs, those people starting businesses. And if you're out there, have some questions. I'm always open to give you some good feedback and um, learning tools and lessons uh, for navigating uh, the marketplace as an ethical, positive, plant-based um, companies out there. Thank you for all what you're doing, and I hope you join me next week. We're going to have a very special guest next week. Ryan Lum from Happy Healthy Vegan is going to be joining us next week on live uh, Facebook Live for Clean Machine. So you don't want to miss that one. Tell people about it. It's going to be a good episode. Uh, Ryan was one of the very first people to break the news about our B12 discovery uh, in Lentine, and of course, that's in Clean Green Protein winner, the nexty winner for best supplement of the year out of all supplement shoes. There's that little, oops, the side, there it is right there. <laughs> that's the nexty award. Um, thanks again for joining me. We'll see you next week, hopefully. Bye-bye.